there's a concept, basically, there's no empty space. So when an injury occurs and there's basically disruption of the tissue, right? Yes. And so we can kind of see that in our muscle example there. So there's directionality of the muscle fibers. And so if there's a, a strain to the muscle, we're then going to see connective tissue being laid down, like you said, in this haphazard way. But in a typical scenario, it's not going to be laid down in that fiber direction. It's just going to be laid down in whichever way it gets distributed. And so now if we put a force through that muscle, like where that green zone is, that is not going to be able to transmit the force the same way as the surrounding tissue. And then if we take this down to the, the Achilles example, and we can talk more about this here in a second, but there's a concept called stress shielding. And so where the, the kind of the black squiggly line is, that's basically, again, where, where the fiber disruption occurred previously. And so now that density is actually less than the surrounding tissue. And so the way that force transmits through tissue is it basically goes through the fibers that can transmit the force the best. And so it avoids putting stress through that particular area. And what we know about tendons, tendons require load to maintain their health. So if we are loading more in that green area and the force is being kind of curved around that disrupted area, that whole right side of the tendon is now atrophying to a certain extent. It's losing its ability to accept load. So then if we then kind of go back to our injury equation, if we then put a force through the Achilles that's higher than its capacity, because it's now actually losing capacity over time because the green zone is, is taking up all the force, that red area is eliminating uh, its ability to accept force. And at some point, that tissue is gonna yield even under what would consider like normal everyday movements because the capacity has lowered uh, to that extent.